After a hard workout, do you need a 25 gram protein meal, a 50 gram protein meal, or even 100 grams of protein? There is new research making a strong case for higher protein. With a post-workout meal of 100 grams producing greater muscle protein synthesis after training than a 25 gram protein meal. Muscle protein synthesis is the process to which our muscles recover and grow. If protein synthesis is higher, you basically make more gains. So this means eating a lot more protein is better, right? The magic words are, it depends. There is also a serious downside that comes with having too much protein on a daily basis that we need to discuss. So let's dive straight into it. Protein is an important nutrient for muscle health. But your body uses protein for more than just muscle recovery after training. Protein provides structure to all bodily tissues. So your eyes, hair, and even skin use some of the protein you consume on a daily basis. In fact, there are studies showing a high-protein diet can help speed up wound injuries by 35%. For the scope of this video though, let's focus on protein's muscle building effects. Because recently, a sort of revolutionary study came out on the topic of protein intake and muscle growth. Many people used to believe that your body can only use 30 grams of protein in a single meal, and that if you would eat 40 grams of protein, 10 grams of that protein would be wasted. This was based on previous research that used to show muscle protein synthesis maxes out when you eat around 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal. But these studies had some flaws. If you have been eating protein all day and then all of a sudden slam a 100 gram protein meal, your muscles do not need all that protein at that time, so your body will not fully utilize all the 100 grams for muscle growth. But if you had a low protein breakfast, then went to the gym and finished a hard workout, your body will soak up the protein in that post-workout meal much better because it needs the protein. The new study I mentioned that got published about two months ago supports this notion. The researchers made the participants perform an early morning workout without having breakfast. So they essentially performed a fasted workout. After a 14-hour fast and 60-minute training session, the participants were either giving a 25-gram protein shake or a 100-gram protein shake. The group that consumed a 100-gram protein shake saw much better muscle protein synthesis over the next 12 hours. Now, some people took this study and started claiming that you need to eat 100 grams of protein with every meal. But let's consider the context. If you have not eaten much protein yet in a day, it makes sense that having a higher protein meal is received well by your body. But if you have smaller and more frequent meals throughout the day, your body already gets that constant stream of protein and you do not have to consume 100 grams of protein post-workout to reach your daily protein target. Because we know from research that consuming 0.7 grams per pound of your goal body weight is enough for maximizing muscle growth. This is based on the most recent meta-analysis about protein intake and muscle growth, which reviewed 49 studies on this topic. See your protein intake per meal as a way to get to your total daily protein target. Let's take me as an example. I am around 176 pounds, which is roughly 80 kilograms. So I need around 125 grams of protein on a daily basis. If I eat a 30 gram protein breakfast, a 30 gram protein lunch, and drink a protein shake that also provides 30 grams of protein, I now have 90 grams of the 125 grams of protein that I need to maximize muscle growth. So for my dinner, I simply need a meal with at least 35 grams of protein and I will be able to reach my 125 gram protein target. Now let me give you another example. Let's say I like to perform intermittent fasting in the morning, so I do not have any protein early in the day. Also, I was super busy with work, so for lunch I just had a quick meal with only 10 grams of protein and a cup of Greek yogurt with another 15 grams of protein. In this scenario, my body has only received 25 grams of protein up until dinner time. It is totally justified if I now have a 100 gram protein dinner in the evening time so I can compensate for the lower protein intake earlier in the day and still reach my 125 gram daily protein target. The main message is to base your protein intake per meal on your total daily protein target. Do not eat based on this false idea that your body can only absorb 30 or something grams of protein per meal. This is not true. Your body can utilize a lot more protein per meal for muscle growth as long as this protein is needed for reaching your daily protein target. This new study I discussed just now is highly encouraging. Whether you want to consume two to three high protein meals or even have six smaller meals on a daily basis, it is possible to make awesome muscle growth happen with both approaches as long as you reach your daily protein target. So you have flexibility, tailor your meal frequency to your preferences. My general recommendation would be just to make sure you have at least two daily protein feedings because usually having just one very high protein meal is not a sustainable way to reach your protein needs. And you may not be able to maximize 24-hour protein synthesis with just one high protein feeding. Now, 
hypothetically speaking, what would happen if you just go ahead and eat super high protein in all of your meals? Would this boost your gains? The research on this topic is clear. If you consume between 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of your goal body weight, eating more protein will not improve your gains. From a health perspective though, there's not necessarily something wrong with eating even higher protein. In one 2016 study, the researchers had bodybuilders eating between 1.2 and 1.5 grams per pound of their body weight for a year. To put it in specific numbers, the bodybuilders consumed between 210 and 280 grams of protein every day for a year. That's like eating more than two whole chickens every day. Because the participants also controlled their calorie intake, they did not gain fat and their health markers remained the same. Another 2018 study had well-trained bodybuilders consume 1.4 grams per pound of their body weight in protein for two years and there were no negative effects on health markers like liver and kidney function. So technically speaking, if you would want to eat more than 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of your goal body weight in protein, it is possible to do that without harming your health. But there are two other reasons why I do not recommend going extremely high in your protein. The first reason is the protein farts. Let's just keep it real. If you regularly eat 100 grams of protein in one meal, your living room will smell crazy. The second and more serious reason why I do not recommend having 100 grams of protein with each of your meals is that it doesn't allow you to maintain balanced nutrition. There's an opportunity cost when it comes to eating higher protein. Let's say you eat a very high protein diet and on a daily basis you consume 250 grams of protein. One gram of protein is 4 calories, so that's 1000 calories just from your protein every day. If you are in the fat loss phase and eat something like 2000 calories per day, this will significantly limit how much carbs and fats you can fit into your diet. And we do need a good amount of carbohydrates and fats for muscle building and overall health purposes. Carbohydrates help fuel your performance because muscle glycogen is a primary fuel source during resistance training. If you already consume enough daily protein, but then go ahead and increase your protein even further at the cost of your carbohydrate intake, this can negatively impact your workout performance. Also, if you decide to eat higher proteins by decreasing your daily fat intake, this can negatively impact hormonal status. A restricted fat intake can negatively impact the levels of anabolic hormones like testosterone. So while eating enough protein is important, this should not come at the expense of balanced nutrition. You do not need ridiculously high protein intakes to maximize muscle growth. In fact, moderating your protein intake can help you get even better progress since you also get a variety of nutrients like carbohydrates and fats that benefit your muscle growth progress in other ways. This is why I recommend most people stick to between 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of your goal body weight in terms of protein. Now for some key takeaways from this video. First, your body can absorb more than 30 grams of protein per meal. There is no protein limit. Secondly, base your protein intake per meal on your total daily protein target. Do you need a 100 gram protein meal to compensate for having a lower protein intake earlier in the day? That is possible as supported by the new research. Thirdly, you do not need 100 grams of protein with every meal to maximize muscle growth. Just make sure that at the end of the day, you fall between 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of your goal body weight in protein. We talked a lot about muscle growth nutrition in today's video. Here above I have a really interesting video aligned for you about how to lose fat faster in the mini cut. Go ahead and check that out and I will see you in the next video.